Now it's time for our U.S. Report regular, former White House Chief of Staff and Senior Advisor at Bondi Partners. Please welcome Mick Mulvaney. Now, Mick, let's kick off and talk more about this Trump indictment. I have been watching the Democrats go out there and step on rakes with this sort of thing for years and years and years. When are they going to learn that every time they go off half cock like this, it only benefits Trump? James, he's been a politician now for about 10 years. I don't think they're going to ever learn that he's just, for all of his strengths and weaknesses, a really good politician. And when you put him in a political situation, which is what this is, this is not a criminal investigation. This is a political investigation. And when you put him in these sorts of situations, he oftentimes wins. He raised a bunch of money this week. He's up in the polls this week. Yes, the Democrats raised a bunch of money as well, but they didn't, they're trying to put him out of the business and it's just not going to work. In fact, if you had to be honest, the chances of Donald Trump being president again actually went up this week, not down because of what the Democrats are doing. Well, and yeah, you know, I think you hit on something really interesting there, Mick, because a lot of Americans I've spoken to, they don't like what looks like a mixing of politics and the criminal justice system. And a lot of them say, look, I don't like Trump. But what's happening here really just looks like, you know, a political hit job using the courts. Is, is, that, is that a correct read? That's exactly what it is. It's a sympathy bounce in the polls. Even critics of his, like mine, I, I will criticize the president when I think he deserves it. But I actually do think he's the victim here. Face it. No other human being on the planet, as far as I know, has ever been convicted of the types of things they're talking about uh, charging Donald Trump with. It's hard to say anything but that it's only happening because it's Donald Trump. And yeah, even Republicans who don't like Trump will come to his defense because they don't like the concept of politicians in Washington, D.C. using the government to come down on their political enemies, which is exactly what this looks like. And it's so funny. I mean, I remember, and you remember, you know, Bill Clinton and all of his supporters saying, oh, come on, it's just an affair, it's just sex. And now, you know, with this, they're like, throw him in jail. It's hilarious. But I want to move on here to Ron DeSantis, who, of course, must be looking at all this and going, yeah, not sure how this is going for me now, because he sat down for an interview with Piers Morgan, and they covered a bunch of topics, but I want to zero in on this. Have a listen, Mick. You think you could beat Biden? I think so. So you're running then? No, I didn't say that. I just said I think I could. I mean, I think that that's, I mean, if you look at Florida. Who would be harder to beat, Biden or Donald Trump? We're, I don't know. Those are two different. Mick, how <laughs> long can Ron DeSantis play this sort of I'm in but I'm not in kind of game? Until uh, about August. That's that's the very longest he could probably do. He's raising a good bit of money. Keep in mind, he can raise money because he's a sitting governor uh, of Florida, so he's still allowed, allowed to raise money. He's clearly getting the media attention. Um, he's got the opportunity to deliver a message. He's got the opportunity to travel. He'll be in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina. So he can do all the things that an ordinary candidate would do without really making a final decision. But that changes this summer. Um, my guess is it's a bad week for Ron DeSantis because it's been a good week for Donald Trump. Um, even DeSantis, it, when forced to a sort of come to Trump's defense over these charges uh, in Manhattan. So um, all things considered, it's probably a better week for Donald Trump than it is for Ron DeSantis. But again, the pendulum swings on this very, very quickly. Of course it does. But one thing I did think was interesting in this interview was that Ron DeSantis took a couple of swipes at Donald Trump, including how he, he, he handled things while he was president during COVID. Have a listen to this. What do you think of the differences? Well, I mean, I think there's a few things. I mean, obviously, you know, the, the approach to COVID w was different. I mean, you know, I would have fired somebody like Fauci. Uh, I think that he got way too big for his britches, and I think he did a lot of damage. Uh, I also think just in terms of my approach to leadership, you know, I get personnel in the government who have the agenda of the people and share our agenda. If you bring your own agenda in, you're gone. We're just not going to have that. It seems here like Ron DeSantis is starting to parry some of uh, Donald Trump's attack on his record as an executive. And of course, because COVID came down when Trump was president, Trump might have some vulnerabilities here, don't you think? Yeah, that 30 seconds is why Ron DeSantis is on the short list for people who might be president. He did a really good job as a governor of an important state during COVID, and Trump had some weaknesses. Tony Fauci, Dr. Fauci, was one of those. So which I think you saw there in 30 seconds was sort of the distillation of the entire DeSantis message if he does run, which is, look, compare how I ran Florida to how Trump ran the United States during COVID, 
and DeSantis thinks people will come down on his side of that argument. And I think they're probably right. Ron DeSantis' sort of informal motto, he doesn't have a motto yet because he's not really running for president yet, was instead of make America great again, it's make America Florida again, because he's using what he did in Florida as an example, which is a pretty effective way to go about it. Absolutely. And I mean, you just have to see the numbers of Americans who are moving to Florida from Democrat states to know that there's some real appeal in that.